Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Factorio Workshop, Building a Better Factory. As always, I'm joined by Zuri. Greetings. So, we have two builds today we're going to go over, and uh, they're both submitted by the same person, uh, Igor Day. One of them is a steam engine setup, and the other is a roundabout. And uh, we'll go over this one, we'll be pretty quick, and then Zuri will uh, entirely take over, pretty much, and do the train thing. Sounds like a plan. Sweet. So this, um, by the way, we're using spawn belt. Great suggestion by someone. Anyway, this is functionally identical to this, or even just a a five by five, right? You can do like fourteen and then just five and five if you don't want it as long. These are each ten. Um, so functionally, this is identical to this. You send your water in here. It goes down hits back to the boilers, goes through the boilers to warm up, and then goes through the engines. Uh, so it pretty much what this does is this is saving space, uh, space lengthwise. If we take a blueprint, we can see um, it's quite a bit shorter than this one, simply because boilers are on the inside rather than in front of it. Uh, although, of course, it is wider than this one over here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's pretty much it. Functionally, it does the exact same thing. It's just the stuff is on the inside, so it comes down, um, hits the boilers to warm up, and goes through the steam engines. This is um, a total of 20 steam engines and uh, 28 boilers. So it's uh, same as this, just a different design. It does look really cool. Uh, so, you know, if you want to use it, there will be a blueprint string. Um, down in the description where you can check it out. Anything else to add, Zuri? Nope. That's pretty good. All right. So your turn. We uh, we have a roundabout here, and uh, Zuri is going to pretty much completely go over all this. All right. Well, the straight through parts prevent one of the drawbacks, actually, from a, a roundabout. And that's a forced um, right turn from another lane with a straight, causing it to use the same sections. Uh, you do need uh, some more signals in here to make it a little more efficient. But overall, using roundabouts is a bad idea. And I shall explain using this little visual representation of a rail system I have. On top here is a loop system, and down here is an intersection-based system. Okay. So we're say we start off with a uh, train here and it's trying to get down here we'll do this for both systems and it's drive on the right correct yes i'm doing drive on the right for this demonstration okay so i'm just gonna say you know take a lot of the wrong terms for worst case scenario so i don't have to zig back and forth all the time for how it actually works okay So these lights, this is essentially the pathing that a train um, looks for and can take. Yep. As it's, we'll do something like this, really. Yes, it passed all the way back upon itself. So essentially, every time a train moves, uh, you know, moves out to go to another station or whatever, it has to check for all this pathing, right? Yeah, these are all these are within about the same distance from the start point, and this is basically how the the pathing AI works. It doesn't do it in, this, in the straight sections that I put the lights on, but this is about the area it needs to check. Now intersections. On the other hand, a little bit differently. Right. Of course, they ran out of lights. <laughs> of course. At least it's easy to get them. All right. I see. So it checked less than half the rail. And um, it's less than half the complexity. So actually, there's there's two factors in the if you're doing a star 
half time calculation uh, equations, it's reducing both the complexity and the total numbers of track it has to check. So it's a huge savings in um, calculation cost for doing the pass. Right. And uh, and you had mentioned to me that on on bigger train systems that can uh, you know make a huge difference because you know with the, a roundabout loop system like this, it's checking pretty much the entire rail system every time a train needs to go somewhere. Yes. And that that could be a huge difference on if you have millions of tracks and far sprung outposts. Right. Whereas this one, it just goes, and as you see, Surrey uh, demonstrated, it just it pretty much hits the end here. And since it's not a loop, it doesn't loop back on itself. Uh, so it's just far less calculation. So performance wise, much better to not do a loop roundabout system. Now, there was one issue um, you had mentioned to me with this roundabout system is there is a possibility of a train jamming on itself going through one of these? Yes, I've only seen it a couple of times, but I, and I'm not sure if it's been reported as a bug or not. But if a train is longer than, say, the census one third, or sorry, one quarter around the circle for each signal, mm -hmm. if something takes up more than three quarters of the circle and it changes its path halfway through the roundabout, it doesn't see itself all while pathing, but it does see itself when moving. So it'll literally try to go through itself and then stop and jam up the entire roundabout. Right. And uh, then that's obviously a problem because then any other trains going through won't be able to because this thing's just going to be stuck in here. Um, now, you did say it's based on the way these signals are placed, it's not possible for multiple trains to jam on each other in this? Correct. Okay. So the signaling on this is good uh, because it, it won't let other, like, multiple trains in here at once, which can be a problem with some roundabouts. If you don't signal it right or build it wrong, that can definitely be an issue. Uh, but, but, yeah, like you mentioned at the beginning, having these straights through the middle here does eliminate uh, some of the problems with using a system like this. Yes, some but not all. And, well, that could be eliminated with moving your roundabouts. And some people are like, how do you make a, 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 a four-way intersection like this with, you know, intersections? And the answer is you can't really do that without tunnels and bridges. You need... To make basically zig it around and make two T junctions if you're gonna use intersections. Right. So it's maybe a little harder to do this with intersections, but it won't have pretty much any of any problems compared to this one. Correct. Again, you have to maintain enough space between your intersections in either of these designs to accommodate the length of your longest train so they don't, you know, a train exiting one doesn't stop entering the other and jam up the entire intersection. Right, exactly. And, uh, I mean, trains, you know, people people have long trains. <laughs> you know, it's definitely not uncommon for, like, a, a what what's a common one? Like, two, six, two, uh, two engines, six cargoes, and then two engines on the end. Um, or if you'd like to use loops, on the stations, which I recommend against. I've seen people use three eight zeros as well. Right, and that is like definitely long enough to just jam up this entire thing, because that would, I mean, that easily take up this entire roundabout. So I, I think that covers it. I mean, the steam engine one was pretty, pretty quick, uh, you know, definitely usable, nothing really wrong with it, uh, different space, uh, you know, consumption, I guess you could say. It's shorter, but wider. It does look cool. Um, definitely viable. And then uh, this roundabout system. So I guess the final verdict is you would advise against using it, but it's not, like, going to, like, ruin your train system by using it. Yeah, you won't have problems with this until you get into the mega base scales. Then you'll have problems with it. But for small-scale stuff, you can use roundabouts. But keep in mind, if you're trying to min-max like I do all the time and build super huge builds, this you want to avoid these. Right. 
Yeah, and, and also, I mean, just as I mentioned briefly before, is it, this one works because it's built well. There's definitely roundabouts that are just never a good idea, right? That are just have, like, really bad signaling or whatever that's going to always clog up a lot. Yes, those typically use um, regular signals and on the inside instead of chain signals. Right, and in some of them, and I was guilty of building these for a long time, some of them don't don't even have these straights, and that's really bad, right? If it's just a circle with the four things like going uh, all around the circle. That is correct. Yeah, so don't do those. This one, pretty good though. Uh, the uh, person who posted it said they just prefer it because it's more, you know, aesthetically pleasing to them than doing junctions, which is understandable. It does look quite nice. And I, I think that's it, guys. So there we go. Steam Engine setup. There will be a uh, link to... Uh, I'll just use the link they used, actually, for the blueprint string for this, and then also the one for this, if you do want to use it. Tons of other junction roundabout designs you can find online. And... Uh, next episode we will uh, cover some other stuff so till then as always thanks for watching if you have any questions suggestions uh you know if you want to submit builds which would be great post down in the comments and until then we uh, look forward to seeing you all and catch you later later, later.